Good morning. Father Rob here with Church of the Holy Spirit in Apopka, Florida, and it is Monday, the first Monday in Advent. Um, it's November 30th, and it's time for a little morning prayer this morning. Um, I hope that you had a blessed weekend um, and you were able to worship with your church family, um, whether in person or uh, online. Take a moment, if you would, and um, find the link where, or the, take the link where you found this video and hit the share button. And let's invite others to join us. I'll remind you to do that again in a moment. <clears throat> um, as always, morning prayer comes from the Book of Common Prayer. It's one of the daily offices, morning and evening. And we start a new season. We actually start a whole new church year um, with Advent. And so we will be um, starting on page 75 um, in the Book of Common Prayer with our opening acclamation for Advent. So if you have your BCP, go ahead and turn there. And uh, we'll get started in just a moment. Um, we'll give a little bit of time for some others to sign on. And uh, then we'll get started. If you're like me, you enjoy a little nice coffee with our morning prayer. <laughs> Okay, it's a dreary Monday morning. I'm here in Florida anyway. I don't know where it's at um, around the country, but you know, we have rain in for today and cold weather. Um, if you're in central Florida, bundle up because tomorrow it's going to be cold. Next few days, it's going to be pretty chilly. So we're looking forward to that. We need some winter weather. All right, um, now that we have some people signed on, and I'll remind you again, go to the post where you found this video, um, click on that little share button, and let's go ahead and invite some others to join us this morning as we share it to our own timelines. Did I do that? Yes, I did. Okie doke. All right. Well, we begin on page 75 of the Book, and Co uh, Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore Him. Come, let us shout to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are His also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, 
and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The appointed psalm, actually, there are three psalms appointed for this morning. Psalms 1, 2, and 3. And we'll begin with Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Psalm 2 Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up and revolt, and the princes plot it together against the Lord? And against his anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow before him, lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. And finally, Psalm 3. Lord, how many adversaries I have! How many are, the, are there are who rise up against me? How many are there are who say of me, there is no help from him in his God? But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord. And he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, we begin at verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. <clears throat> when you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bring offerings that is futile. futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the veil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. 
come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake, and you become imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you receive the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith of, in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The final reading comes from Luke chapter 20, the first eight verses. Luke chapter 20. <clears throat> One day, as he was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it? Who gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Well, they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we continue in our prayers and our readings this morning, um, we have the opportunity to recite together what we believe about this faith of ours using the Apostles' Creed. It can be found on page 96. Let us recite together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect for this morning um, comes from the first Sunday of Advent, and it's found on page 211. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Grace can be found at the top of page 100. Let us pray together. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. Now we take this time to offer up our own prayers and intercessions. We'll give about a minute to pray, and then I'll close us in prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious God, almighty King, the King of the universe, we humbly come before you this morning giving thanks. Uh, we thank you for all that you have done on our behalf by sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to earth to become as one of us, that he may live and die and take on the burdens of our sin. Lord, we pray that in this Advent season you would wake up our hearts that we would be made aware of the great sacrifice and love that comes to us in your Son. Lord, I pray that um, that awareness uh, would be life-changing for each one of us, that we would be impacted by your gospel, that we would be given hope and peace, that we would cling to you as you cling to us. In this life, there are many troubles, um, but in you, in Christ, Lord, we may find hope and peace as we go through the um, struggles. Lord, we pray um, for our lives. We pray for the struggles that we face. We pray um, for our sickness, um, for our sadness, grief, for surgeries, for recoveries, for all the things that we face. 
Lord, we thank you that um, in these paths that you walk with us, Lord, that you give us health, that you give us uh, renewal, and that you bring true peace. Lord, we pray for those um, suffering, um, especially loss of loved ones, uh, for loss of husbands, wives, children, um, and um, just many, many family members, Lord. There are many people that are facing losses. Lord, would you give comfort? Would you um, be the balm for the soul in grief? And that you would uh, remind those that all is not lost, that in Christ we we do um, we are reunited with our loved ones um, one day. Lord, we pray for those facing um, health issues, especially those that are suffering from this um, virus. Lord, would you give um, strength? Would you give full recovery? And Lord, would you bring this pandemic to a swift end? Um, that um, all the means necessary would be put into place so that we may move on um, from this um, from this disease. Lord, we pray for, uh, for your people to come to you, for your gospel to go forth and change hearts and lives, that you would bring hope and peace um, to a struggling um, world. Lord, we, we know that um, only in Christ can we find true peace. And so we pray that we would reminded, be reminded of the joy that comes in knowing Christ. Thank you for the hope that you give us. We pray that hope would go out throughout the, uh, throughout the world. Father, would you um, walk with us this day, that you would keep us on your path, keep us close to you, that we would not stray from your kindness, um, that you would remind us of your love and that you would remind us of the hope that we have in glory, that one day we will rise again with new bodies and a new creation and we will see you face to face and we will be able to reside with you for eternity. We look forward to that day with great anticipation. We thank you for all these things. We ask them in Christ's name. Amen. As we continue... We pray together the prayer of general thanksgiving. It's found on page 101. Would you join me? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, <clears throat> granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. This morning, I pray that you um, have a blessed day. Remember that this is Advent, that we wait in anticipation for the coming of Christ. And dwell on that um, during these next few weeks as we prepare for Christmas. And remember, as always, the Lord is on his throne. He is in control. Um, he is making his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Trust in him. Find your hope and peace in him. The Lord loves you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. I look forward to being with you again. Bye now.